right, we're looking at 77s, 490 years, are decreed for your people in your holy city, Jerusalem, to finish transgression, put an end to sin, atone for wickedness, bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. This is a very, very important test. Is scripture reliable? Figure this out, go into details, and you find out, wow, this is really to the mo to the day. 77 is 490 years. So this 490 year period, which leads into the millennial rule, will begin at the time when King Artaxerxes issues a decree to rebuild Jerusalem. No one understand this. From the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Well, we have Artaxerxes Lone Germanus, king of Babylon, issued a decree to permit Nehemiah to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. He would return from Babylon and start rebuilding it. King Artaxerxes did this on the Jewish calendar month and day of Nisan 1, 445 BC. Look at Nehemiah 2nd chapter, verses 1 through 8. No one understand this from the missing issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem and so the anointed one, the Lord Jesus Christ, until he comes, until our Lord appears in his first coming to present himself as ruler of the world, he will inevitably be rejected as ruler and crucified. Take a look at this. No one understand this, issuing a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. The ruler comes 7-7, 7, 62-7. 7 is 7. 7, 7, 49 years, 62-7 is 434, total of 483 Jewish calendar years, 360 days per year in the Jewish year, 173,880 days. Count the days. No one understand this, the issue of decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. The anointed one comes. 7767 is rebuilt with streets. Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and a trench. But in times of trouble, Jerusalem was rebuilt back in ancient days by Nehemiah in times of trouble. Wow. And it will also be rebuilt during the tribulation period in times of trouble. A double fulfillment of prophecy, which is typical in God's word. Note that here is where a quantum leap of time is about to take place in this passage in the book of Daniel. Once more, we take a look at 62 sevens, 434 years, which occurs after the period of 49 years. After a total of 483 years, 62 sevens, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, will be cut off, but not for himself. Cut off means executed as a criminal. Was he not crucified as a criminal? But not for himself. He was executed as a criminal, and it literally prophesies it wasn't for himself, though. Sins of the whole world, hello, but not executed for something he did himself. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, died for our sins, not for anything he did himself. And at the end of the stipulated period of 483 years, which begins from the time when Nehemiah received a decree from Artaxerxes to rebuild Jerusalem on Nisan 1, 445 B.C., at the end of this 483-year period, to the very day, is our Lord's presentation of himself as Messiah, when he rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey, Sunday, April 6, 32 A.D. Take a look at Matthew 21, 1-11. Shortly thereafter, the text says, After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off. So after this presentation of himself to the day, as ruler on Palm Sunday, April 6, 32 A.D., the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one, would be crucified as a criminal, as the prophecy in Daniel predicted. Note that there is a time span of approximately 2,000 years between the preceding part of verse 26, when our Lord was crucified, 483 years, which we have just discussed, and the next part of verse 26, which follows. The text in the book of Daniel does a quantum leap in time of approximately 2,000 years from when our Lord was cut off and crucified to the period in which the Antichrist lives, the tribulation period, bypassing our age, the church age. That's why there was a 
so many years, 77s, and then 77th. The additional years. Then the people of the rule of the Antichrist who will come will destroy the city of Jerusalem and the sanctuary of the temple, the end of human history as we know it, will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. He, the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many. Israel, for one seven, there's your seven year tribulation period. The seven years, when added to the previous years of 483 years, 490 years, with the intercalation of the church in between, not consecutive here, it jumps 2,000 years. This is the period of time indicated in Daniel 9:24, 77, 70 times 7, 490 years. This 490 year period will pass. Christ gets crucified. And then there will be the end of the age, the end of human history as we know it will also be 490 years of the period of the Mosaic Law and to the end of the age of human history as we know it today and until our Lord's Second Coming. Our Lord's Second Coming will have been inter interrupted by approximately 2,000 years of the Church Age, of the Age of Grace. Note that Scripture and history have proven out that this last seven years of the 490-year period of the Mosaic Law Age are interrupted by approximately 2,000 years of the Church Age. How many of you know that the seven-year tribulation period is the last part of the Mosaic Law period where God's chosen people will finally all come when he comes again in his second coming, Christ, and believe in him. And there will be the priesthood that was promised in Jeremiah and elsewhere. The new covenant will be instituted and fulfilled in that moment. There's your 490-year period intercalated with 2,000 years the church age. So in the middle of the seven, the seven, the last seven years of the tribulation period, the last seven years of the Mosaic law period, the one and the same. The Jews come back in the last seven years and they have an opportunity to trust in their Messiah Savior when he comes again in the second coming. In the middle of the seven, he, the Antichrist, will put an end to sacrifice and offering and then on, and on a wing of the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation. Until the end, that is the decreed is poured out on him. So the Antichrist will be the main purpose behind, the impetus behind the persecution of believers, both Jewish believers and Gentile believers. Notice that he puts himself up as God in the temple in Jerusalem to be worshipped and will not stand for anyone worshipping the one true God of the universe. He will persecute all who will not worship him, Jews and Christians alike. Note that the words the end will come like a flood. In Daniel 9.26 quoted in column 1, and note the words until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled in Luke 21, 24, quoted on page 4. These two phrases indicate that the end of the Gentile control of the world and the beginning of the kingdom with Israel as the ruling nation and our Lord as ruler has not come yet. And it obviously did not come in 70 AD. So when our Lord prophesied as happening to Jerusalem and the temple is yet future, at that time, at that future time, Jerusalem and the sanctuary will again be destroyed this time by the Antichrist. Note also that Daniel prophesies at the end when the anointed one Jesus Christ returns, the second coming, when will come in 490 Jewish calendar years. And according to history, only 483 years have passed from the month of Nisan, March, April, 445 BC, when Nehemiah was given a decree by Persian ruler Artaxerxes to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem to the 10th of Nisan, April 6, AD 32. That's Palm Sunday. So April 6, AD 32 was the time of Passover when the Anointed One, Jesus Christ, officially offered himself as and was rejected as the Messiah by Israel. Matthew 21, 1-11. At that time he was cut off, crucified. The punishment of a, as a criminal would receive. This tempor temporarily suspended the ticking away of the 490-year prophecy interrupted by 2,000 years of church age. There are therefore seven years to go in this 490-year period before our Lord's return. And that's why it was interrupted. This is a 490-year period, which is a period especially marked by the Mosaic Law, rule of life, including temple worship, all exclusively focused on the nation Israel. 
the church not at all being involved in this approximately 2,000 years in this future seven-year period. The church not at all being involved in this two future 2,000 seven-year period. This last seven years has been separated from the first 483 years by approximately 2,000 years of church age history. This is important. Most people don't get this. The 490-year clock will again start ticking as soon as the church age is, age is completed at the rapture. Dave Hunt commented on the prophecies of Daniel in the December 1992 edition of his periodical entitled The Berean Call. Through the writings of Jeremiah, he says, Daniel learned that the Babylonian captivity would last 70 years. 70. God had commanded that each seven years the Hebrew slaves should be set free, debtors forgiven, and the land given a one-year Sabbath of rest. For 490 years, Israel had disobeyed this precept. As judgment, Jews became slaves of Babylon. While their land rested in the 70 years of Sabbath, it had been denied. 490 equals 7 times 70. <clears throat> While confessing this sin, pondering and praying, David was given the revelation <clears throat> that another period <clears throat> of 490 years, 70 weeks of years, lay ahead for his people and for Jerusalem, Daniel 9, 24. At the end of that time, all of Israel's sins would be purged, all prophecy fulfilled and ended, and the Messiah would be reigning on David's throne in Jerusalem. These 70 weeks of years, 490, were to be counted from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild and build Jerusalem, verse 25. That crucial date is given to us in Scripture. Nehemiah tells us that it was... The month in the month of Nisan, March, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes, the king Nehemiah two one eight, that he received the authorization to rebuild Jerusalem. When the day of the month was not given, the first day was intended. So there were several Artaxerxes, but only one Longimanus Artaxerxes, who ruled for more than twenty years, from four sixty five to four twenty five B.C. Thus, we have the key date from which this incredible prophecy was to be calculated. Nisan 1, 445 B.C. And at the end of 69 of these weeks, 7 times 69, 483 years, Messiah the Prince would be made known to Israel, Daniel 9, 25, and then be cut off or slain, but not for himself. Counting 483 years and 30, 360 days each, the Hebrew and Babylonian calendar, a total of 173,880 days from Nisan 1, 445 B.C. brings us to Sunday, April 6, 32 A.D. And on that very day, to the day, now celebrated as Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey and was hailed as Messiah the Prince. Zechariah 9, 9 was fulfilled at the same time. April 6, 32 A.D. was on the Hebrew calendar, 10th of Nisan. On that day, the Passover lamb was taken from the flock and placed under observation for four days to make certain that it was without blemish. During the same four days, Christ, whom John the Baptist had hailed as the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1.29, was likewise on display. Christ was likewise on display before Israel. And on the 14th of Nisan, the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel was to kill it, Passover lamb, in the evening between 3 and 6 p.m., Exodus 12, 3 to 6. It was during that precise time period that Jesus died on the cross. This still leaves seven years of history under Mosaic law, focused spiritually on the nation Israel until Jesus comes again. Those remaining seven years are none other than the seven-year tribulation period. So now let us consider the text in Matthew with respect to our Lord's answer to the disciples' three questions. Keep in mind that Matthew's focus is on the future tribulation time and our Lord's second coming. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? When Jerusalem will be destroyed yet again? And what will be the sign of your coming and at the end of the age? It is also... It's also especially evident in Revelation chapter 11 that Jerusalem will again be trampled upon the future tribulation period. 
This cor correlates with Luke's account of the temple's destruction in Luke 20.